Yeah, hey, um, this is episode 9, would you believe it? I've got a something to show. Uh, actually, yeah, I'll get the site up. We ought to push this app into production, but anyway. Um, uh, do you want me to follow along on Twitch or can you stream over Discord? Yeah, I can, I can, oh, yeah, I can stream on Discord. I'll do that. Yeah, it's less latency that way. Thank you. And uh, I don't think you can see my video though. I can't share. Uh, no, that's okay. Hi, everyone. This is Jeremy speaking. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's good. So I'll go get started. Um, yeah, I wanted to chat to you about something. Um, I'll get my get my other overhead cam. You might have to go to Twitch on this one, though, Jeremy. Yep. So, um, I was thinking. I was kind of thinking at the weekend about my history of workflow. I used to, my first job was in 1994 and I got shipped up to Scotland to work on a um, document image processing system with workflow. And the idea was that they, they had a, a, a local council, a local government in Aberdeen, um, but along the road, quite I mean, maybe I think 100 miles along the coast, there was a fishing town, or what was formerly a fishing town called Flores, and they had, um, I think they'd seen better times, a lot of unemployment in the town. Um, and so there was an initiative to try and move local government processing of council tax over to this fishing town. And it worked out, it was, it was really interesting because PCs at those times hadn't you know, we, they weren't even networked. And so kind of had to go up and put in network cards into these machines. And the idea behind workflow is that somebody in the council would design the steps of processing council tax applications or for, for council tax benefit. Uh, so these are the people applying to, to get the government or get the council to give them a reduced council tax. And they uh, so the applications would come in, they would get scanned by these scanners and they would be saved to optical storage in this huge jukebox, which is a crazy mechanical device. And then I believe that they were stored. Yeah, so they were on the jukebox. You couldn't, you didn't have hard disks big enough for these images in those days. So they were being written to optical platter. And then when the, the, there was a workflow process that would for certain categories of, uh, of application would go over to Forrest, which would be, uh, there was a, um, an office there full of computers, full of people working and, and doing these kind of uh, applications. And they would call up the image and it would then cause the jukebox in Aberdeen to load in the platter and read it and then send all of the uh, data over to the bridge and then display it on this monochrome display. And then the person would say whether it was, you know, I'm incredibly um, high tech for the time. Um, if you think in those days, you know, the, 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 the displays that we had to use and configure were incredibly expensive. They were, you know, very, very high res because they had to show real documents. And in these, these, this is kind of the age of the PC where, you know, I think this is even when you can write Doom 1 or Doom 2 was still around. I mean, that, that was that was kind of the graphical thing of the day. But anyway. Um, but it struck me actually remembering this story that the the idea was that you would go in and you would say on a whiteboard you say well let's transcribe the process you're already doing into a process activity diagram and then we'll write the software to to um, to uh, sit at the the activities of this um, workflow process and the idea that people would log in and they would get a a queue of work if they they had been assigned to two or three activities they would get a combined queue uh, like an inbox and they would process it uh, and this was even before email right this, this is kind of but it struck me through 
thinking about it at the weekend that actually when if you were to replace the word process with schema but the idea of doing something up front that you know the process already and that you're all you're doing is digitalizing you're digitizing a an analog process into a computer database but then it struck me that nowadays we've transcribed all of the analog processes over to computers that that was a kind of a an initial onboarding era for the for, for computerization of analog processes and now we're very much um, this idea that you do everything up front you come up with your database schema up front you come up with your process idea you know it almost prevents you from discovering and migration and evolving your your understanding of the process and I think that the arguments that we've used for crux to say look start off with something schemeless and then discover and add constraints though it kind of occurred to me that the process management workflow processes are really just another form of upfront uh, schema definition and mm -hmm. um, so that was the thought I had over the weekend and that if you were to think about a Kanban a Kanban is slightly more informal than a workflow process in that it has less rules and I, I want to draw so a process would look you know you would have a um, an activity one and you'd say well in if this condition is true it might go to activity two otherwise you might go to activity three and then you might arrive at activity four um, but in a way that all a Kanban is is saying well you can you can actually go any way you like along these. Um, you can move. You can move a, a case from activity to an activity, and there aren't any rules unless you add a rule. And you might say, well, you can't go from A1 to A4. And. Yeah, so so that was the think thought process I I had, and it's a nice diagram. Just just finished paging in here. Yeah, um, I mean, just to, just to be clear, we kind of I'm talking about if you were to have a Kanban rendering of this thing, it'd be equipment. You'd have a column called. Can you see that? No, pops. That's a nice feature, and then you'd have a. You know, these would be cases case one and you, you you can move you can move these cards over from one place to another and that is essentially doing a you know you're you're doing an activity you might be moving something from A1 to A2 which is um, it's almost like having super user access to the workflow management tool and you can then like hack and move things around but um, so but interestingly people love Kanbans because they're very easy to operate and you don't have any rules. You don't have many rules. So sometimes rules are important. And anyway, that's just. So also, Jeremy, I decided to code up the episode today. So we we talked about bootstrapping and bootstrapping is where you use your own compiler writers would writing a compiler or a new language they would very quickly want to start writing the compiler that is actually written to compile the next version of the compiler. And that's the, you know, that's what bootstrapping is. And what we mean by bootstrapping is something similar, which is you're, as soon as you can, you're using the tool as well as building the tool. So you're exposing yourself to all of the, the problems with the tool. Anyway, all right, so back to, here we are, the, So last time we had got to a Kanban, we did this Kanban view, um, but it's still quite primitive. But we still we had the with the drag and drop ability of it, and we were questioning what does it mean to order things in an ad hoc way, and the um, you know what what if we supported the ability to allow a user to decide what the order was in any given um, 
in any given column. And I quite like that idea that you, you know often the act of sorting, the act of, um, for example, you, this column could represent the priority, the, the relative priority of issues or cards and ability to order things such that you can't have everything at the top. It's kind of a, a useful ergonomic. So um, then we were, we, then if you remember Jeremy, we were thinking how do we populate these individual columns or how do we build a Kanban to start with and, and that build a mm -hmm. Kanban co column and how do we then get things into the Kanban which is the challenge for today and I, I sort of thought that you could either have a, an interface here where you could query for cards and then pop them in or in just your normal workflow let's say this was a, a thing that you wanted to um, you wanted to put this entire card for example or this paragraph or a checklist into the Kanban we would have a little thing on here that would say and add to a Kanban column or, or send to or share with or because then in the context of you doing of, of you building up the work and you you say oh actually this is an action and oh, this is say for example um, something to do and at this point you could send it to a column So, certainly the, the, the verbs or the, the idea of like making it explicit because I, I, um, isn't bad. I, I think we talk, talked about like whether you could just include like a hashtag or something mm. in there and then and then surface that hashtag in the sort of inbox for a, a Kanban. Having an explicit button isn't a bad idea, but um, then you have to remember whether or not you've already done it um like explicitly so, so I'm, I'm wondering whether whether the first thing before you even get to sort of adding something is just having a almost like the backlink for you mm. you know this this action appears on these yeah of course yeah so you, without that you wouldn't know whether to hit it or not yeah you you might want to visually show that something is an orphan you know this this is not being tracked by anyone you know if you you know this is a so the first thing you might do here, I say, all right, okay, I, who, who's going to do this? Should I put this in Steve's inbox? So you can assign it. You just happen to know that Steve has an inbox that he, thinks that he prefers people to put queue up work. Yeah, that's an interesting point, actually. As, as long as an action anywhere in the system has a clear owner, you know, it's in somebody's Kanban or some group's Kanban, then in theory it should be getting done by somebody. Um, yeah. So in, in that sense, it's very important to to visually show when something's an orphan. Mm. Maybe, maybe that's the priority then, yeah. To fl flag, you know, this is an orphan action, not part of the Kanban, unlikely to get ticked off. Yeah. And then they, and then it becomes, you, um, yeah, you, you, you update the, the Kanban column that it, that you're going to put it into and that will be updated with the new order and I, I, I so i was thinking there were yeah well here's another thought that i had around just to just just to be clear what we we could have a i'll put put back the overhead cam you just look on So first is that we can have a, a card that actually has a, has a status to do. And we can call this as a kind of explicit status. Now it's, it's coupled because the card and status are coupled together. That's, uh, it's got a, a, a single 
cardinality. Second op option is that you could have this is what we're doing here, which is a um, column called to do and an entry here which is pointing back to the card okay. and this has the uh, perhaps possibly unfortunate aspect to this is that it, it allows two lists to point to the same card but it is it is decoupled and this also allows um, here bordering right because you can put these references in any given order and Steve could kind of manage his own list and then you have this third option which is where you you just say that there is a like a box and a card and you have this membership document that says This card is in this box, um, and I guess finally you have another option where you can say, I guess this is the same as number one. You have a card being in a box, and this is unordered because you can query all the cards in a box. There could be another card here. But because the references are on the card, there is no way of, of tracking the order. They, you, you just know that you've got maybe 100 cards and they're all in a given box or given a given container. And the reason I'm thinking about this is that sometimes order is important. Like you want to be able to have an interface that like we have here, where you can move these these things up and down, and you know, order is important to you. Sometimes, though, membership is something where you know, I've got a like a, a box of cables like this, right? And um, I don't really want to keep storing in crux the the whole box with all of the reference every time I put something in the box. It's enough to know that there's a cable in the box. So order isn't important. I'm not worried about the order. Mm. There isn't a, a kind of explicit order in the box. It's just, yeah, that's useful. And I think boxes are very useful sorting mechanisms. If you, you want to, you know, tidy up, you put all your cables or your socks in one box and all your cables in another box. It's kind of categorization and sorting is a very useful activity for um, coping with chaos and coping with complexity. I mean, all kinds of processes rely on sorting, you know, sending email, or sending mail. You have a sorting office. So, yeah, and that comes back to drag and drop and sorting cards. Is, you know, this is a very useful um, uh, interface, to, user interface element. The, the idea of dragging and drop allows people to, um, you know, swipe left, swipe, swipe right as a form of sorting and categorization. So there we are. I was kind of lost in that that thought, but again, I think the right model here is number two for what we're doing because it gives us the ordering. Um, Strums low. Few seconds behind on the video to see what number two is, but that was the. Oh, oh well, it's on Twitch now. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's still catching up. I think it's probably about 25 seconds behind. Ah. Um, yeah. But yeah, number two was 
Which one? It it was. Um, how did you can't? Oh yeah, it's just popped up. Yep. Yeah. So the ordering decoupled. So to do. Um, yeah, this is where the um, the parent container, the, the to do here and Steve inboxes are are both Kanban columns, hmm. and they they re, they refer to their children. They say, "I contain these cards," and those references are in a vector or in in, in crux, and so that you can have an order. Yeah, I, I mean, to do is usually contextual. I, so, so this goes for ordering as well. Like they're usually contextual. It's like from a subjective point of view, something might be done. Or, or like, you know, is markers read, you know, it, is the, oh, I, I want to, someone's done some piece of work, so it's technically marked as done, but now I want to, like, look at it, like some other person wants to look at it, or maybe I want to come back to it. Mm. And is that, like, a separate to-do action, or should I untick it? And, uh, like, it, it feels like the actions or the to-do should always be abstract from the card itself. Like, a card is never done, necessarily. Yeah. Yeah, the, the doneness or the status of a of a card isn't printed on the card because we were talking. Sometimes you want to decouple that relationship. You know, we use the example of a book being read. Well, it depends. You know, it's it depends on for you. It might be read for me. It might not be read. So we this this has the ability that Steve, you know, to have this card in multiple boxes or although I don't think that is a that's kind of a, a useful feature but something to be aware of you you might decide oh I want to give everybody a uh, you might have a single card saying may timesheets right everyone's got to do their timesheet Steve have you done yours Jeremy have you done yours and mm. they would point to the same you know, task although you could argue that you you could actually gen duplicate and generate a, a you know work item for every every individual. But but what if it's a team servicing like a shared inbox? You know, it's sort of everyone has their own to do list of what they've got to do the next few hours, mm. and it's you know whoever gets to it first, great. But like each person has that task at different points in their own ordering. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, respond to an inbound email from a new sales lead or something. Okay. Right. And then what would stop two people doing it at the same time? Well, someone should always take a lock on the card by saying you know, it's in progress or something. So yeah. Signal. Yeah. You know, that's what we do with uh, the crux board, at least. Yeah, you, you need some coordination mechanism. That coordination mechanism might be a video call. Don't you do this, and I do this, or it might be a uh, you grab a mutex on, on the, yeah. the work item. Yeah. yeah, cool. All right. So then, uh, building site episode nine. Um, so I wrote a few notes in here, and while I was writing, so this is another tangent. While I was writing the notes. It occurred to me that, you know, I was just kind of, I, I woke up with a few ideas and I said, oh, let me jot this idea down in this paragraph. And then I went away from it and then I had another completely independent idea and I, I wanted to jot that one down as well. It was a kind of a meta point about the, you know, and, and then I had another idea. So, but I was able to capture the ideas before they left my head. I mean, this is a real problem for me. I have an idea in the shower. By the time I've dried myself off, I, I've forgotten what I, you know, the, the inside, or I have to run quickly to get a pad of paper, and I'm sure it's going to get worse as I get older. But you, know, you want to, you have an idea, you want to, oh, just let me just get my notebook out and drop that down. I'm sure you've had the same. Yep. And, <laughs> you, you know, or you've got to keep on thinking about the idea while you're in the car, and you've got to get, you know, you've got to try and think, make sure you don't forget it. Or you might, oh, God, I had this great idea, I can't remember what it was. So the ability to capture that idea in situ um, and not really worry too much about breaking it up into 
you might decide, well, actually, there's four or five aspects to this idea, as I, I, as I did here, but I just carried on. But what I want to be able to do now is to say that this whole paragraph obviously needs to be broken up. So there's a kind of, again, it's an evolution. You, you start off with an idea and you focus on just capturing it, not the presentation. You're not worried about how it, what it looks like or the book structure or communicating the idea. You just want to capture it. And you think about how do I can how do I refine this idea? Well, I need to see it in some structure. So I want to press a button here, and be able to promote that paragraph to its own card, or its own container. And then I can then go and break these up into different paragraphs. And I can have some nice bulleted, you know, put some images in here. I can I can decide how I decompose that paragraph. And if you think that's or I might want to take the whole paragraph and move it out of this episode and into its own card. I want to kind of eject that idea. And I think this is very similar to the process of writing effectively, where you, you capture and you sort your ideas, you cluster them, you then break them up, you try to wrap a number of paragraphs under a heading, um, so the ability to say, yep, this is this is all kind of one thing, promote it to a card, and then being able to add a title to that card. Uh, I um, we used to have an add title to this. So the, you see the ability to just promote this, and this would then just become a reference to another card in here. Mm. Um, and that you could do that with just one button click. Right. And then you could have an undo or the ability to take an embedded card and say, you know what, just take every paragraph and splice it back in. So if there's two paragraphs in this card, just throw away the card, take the two paragraphs and splice them into this document, which is the, the reverse of what I'm... Would you then delete the card or would you leave that lingering? Yeah, I think you would delete it because that would, unless somebody else had referenced it, that's going to be an ongoing debate about... You know, at what point we do garbage collection and what is garbage in the system anyway, and doesn't matter. And who cares as long as it's not in. Well, we had during the conference last week, we had sort of an hour and a half chat about temporal data models. And if you have a delete flag, you know, does that sort of uh, mean you don't need a uh, delete in a bitemporal sense? Right. Yeah, there's lots of on that topic, which uh, definitely overlap with what we're talking about here. Mm. I did have a question about whether you could use those TPCH use case features against your own application time. Oh, you know, you could put in a field. So, for example, if these cards actually had created on, and you know, would I still be able to make a query like, show me? you know, um, show me the month that I created the most cards? Or would I have to rely on, you know, would that have to be against the bitemporal accesses? Mm. Can I do a TCP well, query against an application time axis and not just a bitemporal axis? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure how we've implemented it in the... Um benchmarks the Hawken rate. Yeah, I was just curious really. It's certainly right now I think you basically have to implement this transaction mm. I'm fairly sure sorry, it's like an application timestamp. Then you use the data log to do the filtering. Mm. Um, but as we know there is a you know new query engine being worked on which which will expose those timestamps so you shouldn't have to record the same information twice. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I'm not just, yeah, I think it's a, it's a while away that we have to, mm. um, so, yeah, I'm glad I captured these ideas, and so, yeah, let's delete that guy, and I don't know why I left. Yeah. See, and I was capturing these ideas 
on my laptop, which has a feature that we've removed where you can add titles to these things. So I just I wonder whether that thing just sort of well, it won't delete. But yeah, no, he's not found. But he's still kind of in there as a sort of a zombie. Um, but anyway. Yeah, I, mean, I, I kind of thought that, you know, there is a, is a process I've talked about many times about as you acquire, uh, what, what business know-how often is, is what forms, what data to capture, what things you have to capture, the, the, the rules really, and the constraints. And the more mature businesses have more constraints and so, and more processes. You want to open a bank account in a, a new bank, oh, we'll just create a database record, it'll be fine. You know, you want to create a, a bank account in a very established bank, oh, they've got to always know your customer processes to follow and, you know, because they've, they're have they a more mature bank and they've understood these processes and you, you can't just walk into a bank and dump loads of money, you've got to go through this process, you know, and that's, that's all well and good. Uh, but I wonder to what extent, you know, these rules, are, so in that case, these rules and these constraints are your business value or you, you, the, your kind of business intelligence. But is it a, a, an aspect of the technologies that we employ that make it seem that, that mature businesses are just, we, we, we perceive these constraints as just being bureaucracy and that you can't change. And we call that calcification, when something that really should be quite supple or you know it becomes calcified. It's, it's kind of where, when you don't want it, Sometimes you do because you, you're forming bones or teeth and you actually want that, you know, that structure to become hardened so that it can't change. You don't want your, your bones to be floppy. But when that process happens in other parts of the body, uh, then it's a problem. Um, and, you, you know, you, 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 so th this word calcification, which comes from you know, medicine, is, is, is um, is really interesting. I think is really is a really good way to understand how things slow down because you get kind of um, rigid rigidity, and some some of that rigidity comes from our database tooling and and our, you know how hard it is to do a database migration or release a piece of software or how hard it is to affect and make a change in something. So you might realize, oh, this is this is a great new opportunity to. To you know, we could make more money, but I can't because I'm fighting the IT department because they can't change and give me the tools that I need to do. You know, th this happens all the time in business, and so the the job of IT or the job of you know people like us trying to think about how to do IT better is to figure out how we uh, how we kind of constrain calcification. How do we how do we make things remain? How do we re remain agile to allow the business to to, to make you know, to make decisions rather than IT making the de facto decisions. You know, to paint a picture that it's just IT and the business, which is you know, like a kind of useful yeah. approximation. So, so I think I, the fact that all these things are encoded in a way that you have the separation between IT and business, like, makes the problem orders of magnitude worse because it slows down everything. But the the real problem, I think, is that people move around, they change roles, they leave companies, and the the culture in which a system is created can sort of evaporate over time to the point where no one is confident about then changing the system. Right. And, and that is a sort of a two pronged thing. It's one that's you know, the business domain maintain proper, you know, architecture, decision records, or whatever it is, like non technical context. They don't maintain a, a enough information about why the process exists um, but equally you could argue that process or that intent about the process isn't encoded into the technology so that mm. the technology could make it much more um, s simple to reason about why things have been created the way they are but instead they're sort of these two-dimensional cartoon versions of of what was it envisioned yeah. and uh, and of course they have their own technical debt um, so yeah, I think the calcification or 
concretions they uh, they occur in at least two or three dimensions there, yeah. which, which are made worse by the fact that the tools are needlessly complex. Because of that, the, uh, that's a really good point. Um, you just reminded me, you know, why, why kind of we went on this process in the first place of creating a card system or a, and, and why I'm fighting to make it a documentation system and, and you you want your Kanban, but I think it's a, health, a healthy tension there. And the reason I want a documentation system is that I've kind of had a Knuth moment that I, I don't want to carry on building site in you know all its glory and then three years later just forget why I made many of the decisions. So I, I don't want it to be undocumented. I don't want it to be that thing that people use in a very um, uninformed way because there's no documentation and you know where's the documentation well you know nobody's had time to write it because we're we're moving sites so quickly and evolving it and there's all sorts of things in site like kind of like how you build in queries and what kind of those properties mean when you put them in open api and how you you know how that has just been lost they're just there's just things that that you have to go into the code to discover and you know the understanding has been evaporated already so I thought well no we're not going to do any more site development really until we can document it and therefore and just like Donald Knuth was it Donald Knuth who said well you know well, there aren't any uh, there aren't suitable typesetting programs to to, to uh, <laughs> therefore I'm going to spend the next 10 years making one so that I can create the art of computer programming which I have on my bookshelf by the way but that, you know right. so that's where tech came from tech was an itch that needed well the tech was a you know, dependency on the publication of the art of computer programming so I feel that all right so I'd love this to be as you said I love this to be the the thing that captures the context of this of the development of site I, I kind of fit, also had a thought that this uh the other which I've captured here, which is a similar thing, that why are we videoing these live coding exercises, or why are we live coding? And part of it is even if nobody watches it, it's a useful to have a record. At least you could go back and index it somehow and say, ah, you know, when we built this feature, this is the conversation that we had. And even if it was that that moment, you know, two years after you've written some coding, oh, I just can't. I can't. What was I? What was I thinking then? I have some libraries like Jinx that we were kind of talking about the other day. Wrote it two years ago. Can't really remember the code base. And I would love to be able to at least go back and watch a few videos and watch myself writing it. And then I could. Oh, okay. It would gradually pay, gradually page it back into my head. Or if I wasn't, if it was somebody else, if it was Tim and Nick creating something, I could watch them create it, and then I might feel confident. That I've got the context. So th yeah. this idea of the evaporating context is is huge, hmm. and and it partly I get so frustrated as you know about when you have a Kanban task. You've been assigned a task. What does it say? Mail Fred. Mail Fred about what? Don't know. <laughs> That's what the card says. It's you know. Well, when who came up with this idea? You know this this um. You know this uh, XP idea, promise for a conversation. You know you capture something and you you have a conversation. Pre you know assumes that the people are around that you can have a conversation with and get in the up to up to date context, right? That was where car you know that's where XP user stories came from. That it was okay to hemorrhage context and not write documentation or requirements because you could actually get much more up to date requirements. Um, from the uh, tribal knowledge of the the customers. Yeah. I should probably read about XP. Uh, it sort of governs a lot of what you and John and Hawken discuss a lot, I think. We're, we're very much from that. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I can, uh, yeah, I can talk about all of the, 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 the... Yeah, that makes sense. The old days of Kent Beck and Pair programming and with Martin Fowler and uh, you know and also yeah all of the kind of pub talks that Kent gave that we organised in Dublin all those years ago where he you know you really see him in action talking about so a lot of that rubbed off for me but that is for another another time all right. So yeah, loss of context.
So what is the contact? What are we what are we doing here? We're going to create so this ability to share a uh, well we've got to create a kanban haven't we we've got to create the kanban before we can um, dump stuff into it uh, yes but before we even create the kanban i mean currently the actions are tied to the card or to the paragraph what are we looking at here? So we're looking at a card and then... Uh, well, yeah, we've got a, an action and that really... Well, this is the old world because this is... When we when we say, oh, this thing is an action... Um, it is an entity, but it's not a it card. Is, yeah, it, it's going to have an attribute with action is to do or done, right? So in the... Oh, no, we're going to have this... Uh, I'll go back to the overhead cam. So we're currently in mode one where we explicitly set the status on a card but what we're talking about is is going to mode two where we're going to order the um yeah we, we're going to have this ability to say hey send it or reference me from you know to do mm. but, uh, but that reference isn't going to have a state along with it or is it well, the, the 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 state is the membership of a column, and mm. if the column is labeled to do, yeah, and that's the state. But there is there is no global sense of yeah to do. Yeah. I mean, for checkboxes, it's a very simple to do done. But we we we're saying that for many things that you know, like a you know, an issue might you know a, to do write a piece of code and then. Is it ready to test? Is it ready to QA? Is it ready? For blah blah blah. And then is it done? Is it done? Done? Has it been deployed? You know, there are there are a whole load of, you know, not everything is to do done, um, and so we want to be able to capture that. Mm. So it, you know, you might not have a checkbox in this case. You might just have a label saying done. Or whatever the label of the Kanban is. I mean, if you did take a very sort of ontological view of what a to do could contain, obviously in different domains it could have lots of things, but broadly speaking, I guess there's, there's like, I want to see this thing again. Hmm. Someone, I, I want to be reminded of this in the future. And it yeah. doesn't mean that it has to be, that any particular thing has to be done. It's like, just just like a reminder or like a vague intent um, and i guess everything defaults like in a knowledge system most things should default to that yeah like I, i've actually thought like a lot of times what i really want from personal knowledge management is is almost just in every day when you look at it like 20 random things just appear on the left hand side and just just that sort of um spaced repetition yeah distributed learning yeah yeah it's just a reminder just remind you, yeah just this exists this exists but obviously, there's certain things that you really don't ever want to see because it's just completely distractions. Mm. And it's like a truly archived state. Mm. And the only reason you'd ever look at it is for audit purposes or, mm. or something. Um, yeah, that, that, that's true. You have um, in uh, Dave Allen's Getting Things Done, you have this someday, you have these different lists, right? Which is what right, we yeah. and, and you can have a someday, one, a one day someday column that says, or a container say, so, hey, I could just, uh, you know, track it, and you might, you might review it every year, you know, someday I'm going to sort out my photo collection. Oh, I don't want to do it now. Just, you know. um, mm. but. So, so, so if, if we go down this road of like not wanting to hard code any particular ontology, are, are we missing a trick by? Well, yeah. Uh, when you say hard code an ontology, what do, do what do you mean by that? Well, well, oh, sorry. a hard code, uh, like the, I mean, what does, even to the extent of knowing when to show a checkbox, like how do you know when to show a checkbox if, yeah. if all these um, columns that we're going to be, if we're saying a column is a card or whatever, and it stores these, these lists of things, which are actions. Yeah. Is it like, you know, if, if the string value equals to do, then render it as a checkbox. Is that what you're kind of thinking of going down? Initially, yes eventually no i mean you could end up with a thing you know in our kanbans in in Jux, we have a green 
we have some people, you know, you're gr it's green, it's done, somebody's been hired or something, or somebody has been rejected, right? But they're both <laughs> done. Uh, so you could just mark, you could say things that are in these columns, uh, if, if you are rendering a checkbox, then put a tick here. And mm. if you're in, you know, or you know, might even have a, a kind of like, how do you want to render this items? What, what, a, what a kind of visual, uh, what is a checkbox? It looks a box that's next to some text. So it's like in a, it's like a, a spark line or some information. Yeah, it's a little pictogram. So, think yeah, pictogram, pictogram, great. So you could say on each column, what pictogram do I want, right? And you could have one that, oh, really angry face, you know, this is a, this has been rejected or blocked or, you know, waiting, you know, waiting for, you know. Mm. Um, you can even imagine something, you know, like uh, an action is in, it, it's both to do and done, you know, so you have like a confused symbol, like this yeah. needs investigation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, that's right. The hmm, kind of the, the emoji. Oh, I don't know. I think still thinking about this. So, yeah, and it's it. So that would be a kind of nice. So let's let's capture that. All right. So we're just new idea. We've got, yeah, we're going to have to figure out how. Right. Um. So, uh, could membership of a Kanban column uh, mean that items? In that column, this is the you know, I just like right uh, have uh, an emoji, uh, maybe a pictogram associated with them. Uh, for, uh, in line, we've got inline display. You know, uh, this is a uh, let's call this a generalization of the checkbox pictogram, mm. which you can still have, you know. Yeah, but I, I like that. So rather than choosing a checkbox as something special, it really is just a yeah. It's just some pixels associated with the yeah yeah. And that's right. When we just d define our columns, you can have a drop down, or you can pick pick your own emoji, and have a a very quick way of getting to the tick in the box and ballot box and an empty ballot box. So that would work, and. So while I was, well, I also want to capture this idea uh, that Dave Allen's GTD uh, also has a, uh, you could call this a context attribute, right? Which, which for him means like, uh, e.g., at train, at offline, at the shops. You know, like you, oh, I need to buy something in the supermarket. And you keep remember, you keep forgetting. Oh, I've got to buy some toothpaste. Got to buy. Oh, keep. The idea is that you, you you put a at shops or at supermarket on that buy, it. and then when you're at the supermarket, you look at all of your you sort all of your to dos by context, because a lot of things like do tax return you're not going to do in the supermarket, right? So you just don't want it to see it. But you're in the supermarket, you know. Or you're you know. I used to have one for I'm offline on a train because I can't be. I'm not going to get onto the train Wi-Fi. I spent half the journey trying to connect to that. You know, right. right? But while I'm offline, there are actually quite a lot of things I can attend to while I'm offline. That's great. Right. Even um, like video calls sort of have this property. Is like, oh, there's you, me, and James on a call. Here are things that us three can talk about that you know we sort of should talk about. Like while we're all here, we may as well do it. Yeah, yeah. Rather than having to schedule the, all these like tiny little meetings throughout the week, we sort of just want to tick off as much. Stuff that's possible to get done in this context. Yeah, yeah. It happened today. We were, John and I were talking with Tim, and it's like, and then something in the afternoon came. Oh, why didn't we ask Tim that? <laughs> because we were there with him. We could have asked him. <laughs> you know, we didn't. Yeah. You know, we have to go back. And, yeah. You so know. these contexts are. Yeah. More than physical or temporal, there. So yeah. Geospatial. Yeah, yeah. That's right. They can be. You know, or while you're in London, why don't you do this, that, and the other? Yeah. That's right. So we captured that, but that's that would be very easy for us to model in, you know, again. Um, and the, but the other thing that I think that is a quite important, uh, notably notable about. Can you see? Oh no, you can't see this because I've got to change my. No, I can see that. that. Yeah. Dave Allen. Oh, is it Dave Allen? Have I got that right? 
Oh, yeah, on the stream, I think you're still on the... Oh, no, no, I've, I've, I've switched. Just I've used okay. uh, I hope it is Dave Allen, and I'm sorry for... If I, I'm it's done, yeah. Dave yeah. Allen, right, okay. Yeah. And the other one was the idea of um, the... Idea, uh, I suppose... Um, decomposable tasks down to very easy tasks. Uh, high level. So he, in his book, he gives this example of having to do something quite, uh, which is a big project that you're putting off, right? Which is might be for me, doing your tax return or you know could be booking a holiday or something and he says well don't stress over it break it down right what can you do you know booking on a book a flight book a hotel book, right okay how do you book a flight all right where's it from you know you, you gradually well i've got to book you know i've got to work out the dates work out the destinations find out how many people are coming or what their passport numbers are blah 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 you know and you, yeah. Do all that kind of stuff, right? So there's lots that you can do. You just endlessly break things down until even if you don't want to do something, you know, you can just, it ends up, you just, it, it becomes so mundane. That's right. You know, you, you're trying to create uh, something you don't want to do. You break it up until, you you know, you just reward yourself. Oh, that's great. I just made that phone call, right? To find out if Jeff was coming on holiday this time. You know, that's all I had. To, I didn't want to do it, but I, you know, and then you see, so you, you, and you track that. Mm. And that's how you get, that's how you eat the elephant one chunk at a time. Flip the motivational system. Yeah. Like you don't, you know, you don't say, oh, I need to tidy the house, tidy the garage. You do the Marie Kondo things, like, I'm just going to take, take the books out and sort the books. And then once you've sorted out the books, there's less of a problem, you know. And now I've got to go and get the clothes. So I'll go, oh, pick up all the clothes. And now I'll pick up all the kids' toys. And now, you know, and you break it down. I mean, there's another observation which is there, which which is that um, so much of what we're trying to do with these information systems is make them amenable to these sort of wetware systems we have yeah. you know, with our emotions and that sort of thing. Um, yeah. And, that, and that, that's arguably the the hardest part of um, software is is making it enjoyable to use. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it struck me also that you know where we're looking at the, these paragraphs and I, I kind of felt, hey, this is something I could break, I could press a button and turn it. So I think how unamenable Microsoft Word is to this sort of, oh, it was when I had this idea of the paragraph sorter, a bit like a slide sorter of PowerPoint where you go, oh no, that idea goes in there. And, you know, and doing that in a big markdown or ASCII doc document in Emacs is a real pain. I mean, it, it's, uh, that's why our org mode is so nice because it allows you to order things and move things up and down and rearrange things it's so good for that but then you know I don't want to write my stuff in org mode but the the thing is word makes that very very hard you and I think there is a view perspective and you can move and drag and drop paragraphs but it I wouldn't say it as easy um, but I'm talking about more the kind of uh, an interface where you know you've got a like your document here on the left, your document on your right, and you can literally move things, paragraphs over, you know, to yeah, a little yeah. bit like Emacs does, where you have your left well, view and your right view. In a way, like I imagine people that face this more than anyone are like authors, you know, you can imagine JK Rowling or something sitting down before she's really finished the first book of Harry Potter, trying to flesh out the whole entire story arc and you know, think about when to introduce certain things and like, all, all of these permutations yeah i mean how, how on earth someone does that who's not computer literate or, yeah. or you know, some powerful tooling underneath them it's, well no i mean nobody nobody writes a book from front to back just just that sits there with the typewriter you know even that trope of typewriting type you know the typewriter you know there's always a a waste paper basket next to the author full of early drafts that they've ripped up and you know in a half drunk bottle of whiskey and you know they get to the next so and piles of paper everywhere right and you're reordering that way that's the analog way but yeah th this is what struck me about what is so 
inefficient about text editors is that they sort of enforce that typewriter that are oh, you going to just write front you know it's a linear one dimensional you're going to go from the top you're going to write code go to the bottom and actually it isn't like that that's what you end up with you end up with a file of code but it, you don't write it that way um, and that's why I mean I'm committing complete developer heresy here by saying that maybe text editors are not the best tool you know certainly for writing uh, or and maybe also for coding but you're right you know people and I was thinking about you structure text and then you you might have an idea that you're going to talk about you know you order it and you you, you know when you write as we shall see in chapter seven in your chapter, and then you realise actually we need to have that bit in chapter seven in chapter two, and you you sort of as we saw in chapter two, and that, that kind of like the the struggle of trying to say which idea do I present first? What does the reader need to understand before I can then introduce this other thing? And you know, and so a lot of writing is just this kind of trying to fix a a this cyclic graph, and you're trying to reduce the cycles, or you're trying to you're trying to kind of to untangle some things and order things and so you're not constantly as we shall see you're constantly having to do forward references and uh, although some forward references are fine and that and when you're writing an introduction to a book or a forward to a book then forward references are okay hmm. so this is this is a, a very unproductive live coding <laughs> Live thinking. Uh, well, I, I think we've reached a decision about how to change the cards. So, so what do you think the first coding? Well, Alex here? says that there is some people on. There are people leaving comments on our Twitch, and we should get a pop out. But actually, as I suspected, there aren't. Oh, well, there is. There is a couple of people, but one of them is Alex. Um, making the same point about that. When you create all the cards in a box, could you specify the order as part of the query instead of making it explicit? Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I do think creation time is the most, unless unless someone manually orders something, sort of data added is the most important thing to order by. You wouldn't want to order alphabetically, for instance. Yeah, this is, yeah, I think this is exactly the, there are sometimes you want to render a list of cards, right? Um, in a, you've got some ordering predicate, which is like the most, in, you know, something something intrinsic to or explicit on in the query. You can say order them by created date. You've got the information, and sometimes you're asking the user to create the order. It's an ad hoc thing. You're, you're being, you've got an implicit order, and you're allowing the person to edit them, and that's what we're trying to model but that doesn't mean that that every you know that, that there won't be other queries that so I think it's a good point and yes order by creation time or importance if that importance is inferable we're kind of saying that at the beginning of the process you just collect a whole bunch of ideas together and you you know you you, you the the sort the the user interface ability to sort things is is you telling the system what the relative importances or priorities are so yeah i think that's that's quite right um, but then you've got to s indicate quite clearly on the kanban to say you can't you can't just willy-nilly these are all in a fixed order so you've got to have to visually turn that off but yeah and that that makes it quite hard. So what does it mean when you drag something over here and you put it down here and something's got a, a kind of a implied order? Right. So that's that's the problem with that. But thank you for the question. That's a very good one. And yeah. And Alex is saying, why press a button? Why not have all cards be able to view in Kanban view and add tags and such to filter it down so i think we're, we're saying press a button to say share we're, we're, we're thinking about having multiple kanbans for a start there'll be lots of kanbans in the system so 
you know you're you're really doing that very first bit of capturing a, a task and wanting to populate a Kanban. So that's what the button is for. But once it's in a, a big list, it can be filtered and and sorted and what have you. Yeah, I don't think we're saying you wouldn't want to do the reverse. Yeah. So it, yeah, I mean, looking at the way GitHub does it, you, you can certainly from a GitHub issue assign it to multiple Kanbans and choose the column without having to leave leave the issue screen. Yeah. And then there's this sort of idea of something having a, you know, as Alex says, the hash card tag, which is, which is interesting. Because I was thinking about tags, and I think tags are really, they are cheap ways of adding a reference. When you add a tag to something, like hashtag, you know, euros, or you're connecting that thing to the euros. That's what, you know, but it's... The trouble with the hashtags is that they're a bit ambiguous. You can have, there's no um, central authority of what the hashtags mean. You know, they, they, so they, by the, the very, by the informality, they're, they have some limited use. But I think really if hashtags are used in the absence of something better, which is a graph where you can add things and, you know, uh, so if you I don't, you, I was going to say, if you can't at mention anything, if you don't have that facility, hashtags are, a, are a, a, you know, a, let's call it a poor person's at mention, right? If you've got the ability to at mention, that's much more powerful than a hashtag, as, as long as you can make it, if you can make it ergonomic and and quick to do. Mm. Yep, yeah, I agree. I, I was just about to say, like, is there a way to have like a user experience which is continuous? So, um, like, you can have a hashtag, mm. um, but behind the scenes, you are still creating an entity, but the the identity is the like the literal string. Mm. Um, but that means you can then fluidly turn that into an entity, and then all references where where someone might have typed hashtag foo in future when you come back to it that might then say at foo um because someone's fleshed out the body of that thing with more more information yeah. so the at implies there's uh, more detail than just the characters yeah i like the way intellij does it when you do an import where it just colors it red and it, you know pops up do you mean this <laughs> yeah yeah you, know, you get to kind of uh, so you can do it after, you can save your file and then, you know, it won't compile, but then you can go back and you can then uh, disambiguate your your mentions of. Okay, yeah, I, I suppose, yeah, you wouldn't want to globally, yeah, you will have collision tags, tags are collision. Yeah, well, that's what, you know, that, that you want the job of being able to resolve them. But, you know, if you have a hashtag, the point is you can point to that hashtag and see all the backlinks to the hashtag. That's why it's useful because you can you can find all of the other documents that are mentioning the hash euros, and then they they are they look like that, that's a way of finding clusters of you know islands of information. If everything you know of all of the cards are you know all the cards are hashtag you know hash juxt you know then oh okay they're all referring to juxt. That might be useful. Okay, so there's that, and then and Alex is just final comments saying comments are, are very important, and I think that's that. I think we we strongly agree, which is why um, we're talking about everything. You know, everything in our system is commentable. You know, every card can have you know multiple comments, and it just goes like and and subdivisions thereof that you you can build even against a single card, an entire, a, a, an entire threaded conversation, you can build, build an entire, you know, in a way a card can become a, like a Slack channel or, 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 mm -hmm. or like a Zulip thing, become a whole thread of conversation, but you get that for free. And I think that, that is really important that, that you can comment on everything and leave. That's, a, that's an interesting point that you just made. So you can imagine like in a card, 
in one view of a card, you don't care who author which line, but you almost want to turn a toggle on and say, show me the authors for each line. Mm. And then it's, yeah, suddenly it's a chat application. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a nice trick. Um, and then yeah, a threaded discussion is just creating a new section and that then use, that becomes another card. So this self-similarity yeah. idea is fractal, fractal-like is a better way of putting it. It's, mm. it's fractal-like all the way down. Just and, and but then everything lower down can point to the things up high, higher up as well. It's a um, it's a directed acyclic graph or a cyclic graph actually, not a, an acyclic. Yeah, graph. backing certainly is it. So uh, and I think we also were going to create a kanban, weren't we? But it's been an hour and we haven't even written a line of code. It must take a while to boot it up, doesn't it? Well, yeah. Here we are. This was it. This was the thing. Just, to, you know, we could create a new card, right? So, I am actually a Kanban. This is us creating a new thing, and the the way that we did that was what we we called it Kanban. Okay. And then it turns into a Kanban. That's what we did last time. Hmm. So that Kanban is entirely hard coded. Well, so first. Yeah, I mean the idea is that we've done it in a very primitive way. That you add types in. You add, you know, I suppose they're really like hashtags, but the types are in a in a type hierarchy and they have uh, subclass relationships you know if something that is a frog is also an amphibian that sort of thing right um, what do we call that in type inference but the, the the key and we I was talking with Remy today um, who couldn't join us I was gonna ask him to um, but we had a conversation about this and the problem mm -hmm. we're trying to solve is this idea of a our timesheet system of an individual being assigned to a project so you know and this assignment idea which we've got in sight and crux you know we just chucked in some assignments in order to say well well this project has got this people on it and this this person is working on this project and then this project and, you know and putting it into a plan view and we have a little application called plan which is in our um, which is in our code repository here. Um, and that's all got a kind of nice funky, do you remember we did that nice funky nice calendar view, right? Mm. But really, partly, because I really don't want to write in all these different code bases, I really just like to focus on one, just one. And, and the card system is, seems to be more where I feel we want to focus. Because if you have come up with lots of different applications, then they're just silos of information and they don't really, it's much harder to integrate them. So start, you just build up the card system and make it do what you need it to do. And then you get all this stuff like comments for free and ability to doc, self-document, you know, to document everything and as you go, blah, blah, blah. But I was thinking, what is an, an assignment then is just a card. Um, and actually I, did I write it? Yeah, I did. Uh, I can put the, uh, the overhead cam on here. If I can lose my here we are. So Jeremy you'll have to let me know when that pops up on Twitch. We'll have to have a figure out a better way of doing this. I'll uh, let you know it hasn't happened yet. But yeah this is the um so the idea that an assignment itself could be a card and when a card is of type assignment one of its types is type assignment it then points to a JSON schema and the JSON schema for an assignment type says oh you've got to have a person and you've got to have a project and you've got to have a start date you don't need to have an, 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 an end date is optional, but if you to have it, it has to be a date. It's just switched, by the way. All right. Okay. 
So there is a way I can share with, that I am. No, no, it's fine. Don't let me interrupt you throughout your flow. I just wanted to let you know the sort of delay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I don't know if you can. So, so what we we're sort of saying here that. So this is the type here. And it'll be the name of the site. And so there's there's a person, and a picture of them, and a project. And are called GSA. And then you've got a start date and an optional end date. And then here you may have some you know attachments that there might be some. Um, there might be the, the customer or client sends an email saying, you know, that person's done a great job on the project. Well done, you know, and we got it, you know, and you might just attach it to the. So this is a record of a person's involvement on a project. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's much more than just a, a cell in a spreadsheet. It's a yeah, it's an entire thing in itself. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, they they look at this and it's a record of all their interactions, all the meetings, all their contributions, all their notes, and you know they can put all these things in it. And because when the assignment ends and they go on to another project, they really want to close that chapter. They don't want to go on to a new project and see all these notes from the old project because they're not relevant. And when they may come back to that project later on, they might want to be able to review all these old notes. So it's a it's a useful container and it, it got me thinking that actually what what was just a, a record in crux saying this person is on this thing oh you know it could be much much richer and i put this little bit of it could have attachments as well and then it occurred to me that actually this looks very much like um a hiring card if, if remy hasn't joined juxt at this point it then is a different thing and the attachment could be Remy's CV, and you know, and then the status of this card. He can be in a in a hiring board, and you know, or a, so this really is like a case file. And you know, that's how people have organised business processes for a long time. They've called them case files, and they have filing cabinets, and you know, you pick up the case file, which is like a card in our world, because uh, mm. we're using the word card to mean containers and you know, folder and everything. You know. Um, yeah, there's a very clear containment relationship there, isn't there? Sort of, I, I like the paperclip because it's very physical, and um, you're right, a, a card would appear in one. Like the, the assignment would be its own file. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a so, and the paperclip represents something that's associated. These things are attached, and that they are. It might not be that they get destroyed. Then it's not a. We were talking about where if you destroy the card, you destroy everything on that card. And sometimes the answer is yes. And we talk about this: is it a true component relationship? There is a a, con, a kind of associate association relationship. So you might destroy the um, you might destroy the uh, hiring card with, along with the CV for privacy reasons. You might destroy the CV at a point. But you, you know, in other cases, you may not. Um, you, you just take that document, it's just an association or a reference with a document. Mm. And then from the, the client's perspective, this isn't an assignment, it's a billing period or something, but it's the same data. Yeah. Yeah, this can be viewed in, by an account system to say, oh, okay, and then you might have a daily, you know, a, a charge for that person and then that uh, this captures all of the, the times that they were working and weren't working, so that, that helps. When they're filling out their timesheet on a date that is in between the start and the end, then you, the system knows exactly what project code to allocate to that timesheet because they know what project you're on. Or if you're on two projects, so that you've got two assignments, you're on two different projects, then you can get to choose. I spent the morning on this project, spent the afternoon on that project. So again, I mean, that was the, the, the problem that we were, we were running into by having a timesheet application that we had, a, you know, the word time or work, we had lots of choices for names, but the, the problem is, is that you were eventually going to have to store duplicate information because the timesheet system needs the same information as the, you know. So I think for now, we just need to solve all of our 
work management work our, our kind of business application needs in the card system uh, and see where we get to yeah that's good thank you for sharing that yeah well we don't have to code today but it was a good well, I, I don't mind uh, what what can we do do we just start write we just need to have a thing here to say give me a new column that's so it's not a it's it's a little bit like um it's a little bit like this button here we it's not easy to create a new paragraph by the way jeremy at the bottom you sort of have to get into one and hit return but this is because this this rendering here has this has some buttons that you can you know you can so we can create a new card right and it has this button or it has this title you can add a type um, so this is a view of a card driven by the type so the sort of available options here depend on the type what I'm trying to say is we we'll go to one of our Kanbans we need a button here to say or some way of creating a new column maybe we call it new column but if if we if we had a view as card button and it, you know switch to using the card renderer yeah would that allow us to do it like, do we need do we need to um well the first problem is that this this is just hard coded data right mm. so it was because we end we start off with nothing at all remember we were trying to get the um lose drag and drop code just something yeah. that we could show right so so now we need something that will allow us to create a new column. So let's make these things disappear. We don't, at this point, have to do or done. We just have an empty Kanban. Uh, so let's render it honestly. I think it was, yeah. No, here we go. This was our. Can we have render card if I use that to render? No, I haven't. Right, so this can be a multi method that dispatches on. Yeah. I mean, it's an awful, that, that data is an awful word, uh, but anyway. So that's just that. And it takes card. It's data, right? But I think I'll rename it to card. And then uh, here we can um, we can call render card on the data, and we can have the version which is the default. By default, <coughs> by default we do this one. realization that I might not have committed from last time but now I have yeah, we did so that's good so this is the default and then the um, the case definitely didn't I no definitely run the car or run the card and this would be the uh, Kanban That would be that would be data. And that would be this one. Drop block card. Yeah. Oh. Right, let's see what happens now. Oh.
and then it would it needs the ID which is um, Uh, it, yeah, I think it's in. It's in. It's actually in there. We could we could destructure it. Render card for curse. Where? Uh, the three four eight. Three four two. It's saying oh there there it is. Uh oh because it's recursive, isn't it? And therefore we just uh well we need it because it's recursive we'll just parent ID. Uh Huh. Yeah, of course we have to dispatch that as well then. Yeah, possibly. For now anyway. So let's do it. Index as well, does it? Looks mm -hmm. like it. That's not we need everything. And we we can refactor one day. I mean, it won't be. this will all come out and wash. Ooh. What's that? We haven't broken the default case with other cards. They, they uh, that would be a good test, wouldn't it? Uh, no. Good. Nice. And there's some reason why you don't want to have extra dispatch values in there. I beg your pardon, Jeremy. I'm sorry. No, sorry. Um, no, you're concentrating. I, I, I was just saying, um, multi methods. Like if if you have arbitrary like dynamic variables and in going into the multi method, not, I don't mean dynamic variable. I mean just. Yeah, you can. I mean, you can put any. Finite number of pipes, like because we're we're doing it on three different parameters. It means is. Yeah, it just means that I have to take the first parameter and dispatch on the type there, which is just no problem. I mean, it, isn't there like some closure runtime issue there with multi methods, and, and eventually you'll fill up the, the memory? Oh, if I was to, if there were thousands of types, you mean? Yeah, if there, well, maybe millions of parent millions IDs. Types. They'd all be distinct, and they'd all be sort of interned or something, wouldn't they? Oh uh, yeah, well it wasn't that wasn't a limitation. I was. Okay, I think I've read something about that. Anyway, it's, it's definitely not an issue for this. Yeah. Now at least. No, this will cap. Just default will capture. I mean, like I was just doing this now because I kind of felt the code code hmm. really wants us to be able to quickly add new renders depending on the type. I mean, although you know, I. Right now, we're saying the type dictates the rendering, which I don't think is a. I, you know, I, I don't think it is. The the dispatch function is as simple as this. I think it, the dispatch function potentially is going to be quite complex. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the, for now, this will be fine, and this, yeah, we're still very much experimenting. But the, you know, the experiments are good. So here's. Uh, we want to be able to render this uh, Kanban. 
and uh, we might be able to uh, possibly put that in our our Kanban. Um, sort of. No, we don't want to put it there. Well, we're gonna have it. Yeah, we, we're gonna run into a uh, circular dependency issue pretty quickly. But yeah. So let's add a. Um, oh, we've got a button. Render up thing. Yeah, okay. Add it. Put out the ID. Yeah, no, it's such, just occurred to me that we would be rendering a Kanban inside a, yeah, it would be possible to render a Kanban inside a document, which would be nice, but yeah, because this is, this is rendering, every card has, gets rendered. Anyway, uh, so this would be the ID here, and we can call it. Okay, new column. All right, here I am. Oh, I don't think I want to do that. I want to do this. New column, we all get a uh, an error saying there's no new column. Okay. It's a little bit like a add paragraph, isn't it? A new paragraph. temptation to stop repeating yourself but I think it's right to duplicate at this point yeah yeah uh, I mean it's yeah we don't when we, we create a new No, we don't need, gosh, yeah, I don't need that one, I don't need the 
it's just the child that we want. And the child is associated. But do the columns have an ordering? What's that? The columns, the columns will have an ordering between them, right? So it is a bit like a variable. Oh, it is a little bit like, yes, column will have an ordering. So it's a bit like the, um, Yeah, so maybe look. And this is this code is a bit. Let's just try and get. Um, so we do a new paragraph. What's this new container? Yeah, I can't remember. We'll get the contain the original. Oh, oh, okay. This is the right. It's the same thing. We got to say this is this is me. Right. Yeah. We no, we don't have a uh, right. We need to put this in the last place. So uh, let's just conj conj from the the child ID. And that would have to be a kind of F meal. Sort of. Yeah, okay. That seems to be. So the idea here, if we put a new column, oh, we've got to ren we've got to be able to render these Kanban columns. Um, so if we go to the. Uh, so here we would. These would be the children. Let's do this now. Right? Full of pop enter. That's like the, the name of the the name of the uh, title, and then uh, I have to put some random ones in here. Okay, new column. Oh, uh, probably is a hmm. is that event firing? No, it seems to me not an event firing. So That's right. That's the code. That... I think we are getting. Let's just see if we're getting stuff in the database. Yeah, the columns are going into the database thick and fast. Okay. We can.
and they have a new, uh, new column. So let's have a look and see what. Uh, let's have a look at our Kanbans. Ah. Yeah, we've got one there. Uh, let's have a look at that. I think that's that. Yeah, that last one. And yeah, that's the camera. And does it have children? It does have a single child, which is the three V eight. But that's that's not one of our ones. Hmm. Other bit. I'm a Kanban called. I'm a Kanban board called My To Do's. Did you type that that in in the last few minutes? Then? No, no, that's a different one. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, no, that's that's right. Uh, it's it's oh. we're, we're, yeah. This has got to be. Uh, the with the one ending five four five. Yeah, so oh, perhaps perhaps that is that one. Then. Oh, Python five four five. Right. Um, I think the. Should we, should we get it rendering the title so we can make it? Yeah, ready? let's get it rendering the title. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. So it's just not rendering the columns. That this one has ch children of this, which has got no text, but that's okay. It's got some content. I think this is the paragraph that gets created when you create a new card. You get an initial paragraph mm. anyway. So what's not happening is that well, we're not putting our container into the database. If you see, we're not. We're not. Um, we're putting the child in, but we're not. Uh, we're not saving. I'll just say like. The, we just copied a new paragraph. New paragraph. Not yeah, new paragraph. We were. Oh yeah. Yeah, we were doing. Okay. Yeah. We were associating the container, uh, the container ID, in there as well. Okay. In the same way. And then we were saying new child, you guys really just cut, cut and paste it, and that's what it is. That's why I wouldn't have worked. We'll do new column now. Oh, put failure. Because that's not found. Because. Hmm. Why is it? So this is the board, and it has a it has a single child, which has no text and no no type. This is a type of because there's no Kanban column there. So um, if I clicked on new column, we get an HTTP failure. Ah, oh. yeah, I think
Kesin. Okay, so must. Oh, I know. Uh, Oh look, this container ID is broken because it's not that, is it? It's first of all, it's that. Yeah, that that's put in there. Right, so do we have? If you refresh the page, do they show? Yeah, I do the show. Let's have a look and see. This is five four five. Um, yeah. Right, we've got our cards in there, so it's just the rendering that is a bit broken. So if we got a few more columns in. So I, I don't mean to derail this particular train, but um, it, is there any advantage to consolidating on, like a, a paragraph can be a column in a Kanban, or do you really want to keep those things orthogonal? Um, can you say that again? So we, we could actually just treat the paragraphs that are in the children uh, vector as column names. We, we, could, we could do that. It wouldn't be crazy. Or, or are, you, are you explicitly wanting to avoid overloading the meaning of a paragraph? Yeah, they could, uh, they could just be paragraph. Well, hmm. I don't know. Like, are you saying um, that are you saying that being a child of a of a Kanban means that, of course, you're being a child of a Kanban means that you are implicitly a Kanban column. Is that what you're saying? You don't need a... Yeah, more or less, yeah. And, and, and in that way, you could you know, leverage the, the... The code that we've already written. Yeah, exactly. leverage the code we've already written. And you, know, you can have a very easy, you know, quick way to edit the columns without having to have a whole bunch of extra like column title editing code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And fields and stuff for that. Um, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen like, workflowy. Um, I think even Rome has like Kanban views, but workflow, you know, which was for a long time purely like an outline thing, outline at all. They they added uh, fractal Kanban boards, and if you look at the way they've done it, they sort of they you, you define the Kanban in the normal hierarchy, and then you press a button, and it turns into this. 2D layout. Right. So they have this symmetry between the columns and the, what we would call paragraphs. Yeah, I, I haven't got a problem with that. They're just children, aren't they? And, and I, I don't think we need to have. I've been ambivalent about whether the paragraphs need to be type paragraph. Because really, the yeah, the the paragraphs because they're children of a section. Hmm. It's that intentional and extensional typing thing, isn't it? You can 
can you can tell the type from the context something has and the attributes it has, or you can it's because it's explicitly named. Mm. It, uh, we, we currently support on the card view um, a union type for the children, don't we? We can have anything in there. In the Kanban, that probably makes less sense. You're not going to want to have a. Uh, uh, I'm sure I remember this, like a quote or something as a column. I think it's yeah, it's just a, maybe a question for to sleep on, um, but I think you're right that the code ought to be a little bit more. Um, yeah, I, I see the, the this unifying with the the paragraph idea. So we kind of need to have the ability to create a new new child anyway. Uh, when we create a new paragraph, yeah, we need three things. Okay, this and the. So if we just give it the if we. New and then we just get new paragraph, and we would need the index, which would be and the children room. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, I think it's trying to. By doing a new paragraph, by clicking on that, we're getting this DOM node not found. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know why we're not rendering. I don't know why we're not rendering. Is it because of where you're where you're deriving the? Oh. Oh, okay. Because we're just not looking at those ones up. These are. Um, Oh, I think it's simply a matter of no. Is it because it's lazy? No. Yeah, uh, because we're not looking. Uh, yeah, it's because we have to say um, we have to look it up. It will be the ID and what that car is to subscribe to the ID. That's, that's what it will be. That's why it won't be rendering. Yeah, again. Okay. Right, right. We can, uh, no, it's not adding to. Oh, yeah, we are. We're sort of seeing there's a whole load of IDs here. If you refresh the page, we refresh the page. What do we see? I don't see why. Oh, why? Oh, I know why. Because the, we're, we're doing into. We're, we're, we haven't got the type. The title is all the same, essentially. So uh, we like we could do map index. Map index over. What else we get? Is it the ix function? To zero. All right. So index. Um, we do that over children.
something like this, you know, just, just make them different. There we go. They're in a funny old order. But I guess it's because of that thing. Yeah, okay. And then the Kanban is expecting a map by items group by so, so really probably the Kanban needs to be reworked so that it doesn't take a map because maps are not ordered. But there we are, I know it's worked, sort of. We can create new columns in our camera. Yeah. And yeah. I wonder I don't know where this message is coming from. But it's all right. To can get, oh, that's interesting. It's gone all a bit funny. But I think that's me done, Jeremy. I don't think I can type another character. I'm my brain has <laughs> gone into mush again. No, no that's cool. A bit longer. Um, some some progress. Uh, I, I posted a, a link to the, the workflowy fractal Kanban video oh, yeah. in the Twitch stream, which um, I recommend you check out. Was that on Slack? Uh, this is on Twitch. Okay. Oh right. Oh yeah. Um, but like, yeah, I, I think they show very nicely how these concepts intertwine. So what is workflowy? Is that a, a, a is it oh. an well, for it's basically the same concept of Rome, but you know they, they started off with, with the outliner, uh, but this has been going for a decade, over a decade perhaps. Right. Um, it was something I got very excited about in the early 2010s, um, but it, as far as I know, it's still a very small team. They never they never raise VC money or anything. No. They never bet big on graphs either. It's, it, they, they have um, developed quite a sophisticated model from what I gather. Like, in a similar sense to Notion, you can share segments of your your outline, hmm. granular permissions. Yeah, I guess. It, it, I mean, another it is a sort of outline. It's a, we we call car, we call them containers, but essentially, we you know we talk, we're all talking about the same thing, really, and all, everything having an ordered set of children. Hmm. But I guess Crux makes that very easy to store. But I guess you could do that in a. Um, well, what Crux does well is allow you to really put anything into each child. Be quite informal about what you can add to it. Hmm. Well, yeah, it allows us to iterate on the code and the data concurrently without having to do everything in lockstep. Hmm. Yeah, there'd be no way. I mean, this is sort of this coding is random enough without having to go into the database and change schema and migrations and things like that mm. we've not had to. I guess that's, it's almost like a the same qualities of a REPL but with persistence mm. yeah it feels like it I mean I, I, I know I could create some uh, technical debt in the database but that then just becomes a data cleansing up, uh, exercise which you sort of have to do anyway because mm. You know, when you put data in the database, it lives there until you take it out. And that is always the case. It doesn't matter how many, you know, CD pipelines you throw at the problem. It's it's the, you, you know, code you can completely replace on every release, but you don't get to release a whole brand new database with new, fresh, clean data in it. Um, mm. Well, not into production anyway. And that's kind of the, 
I think the elephant in the room with a lot of these ideas about releasing code early and often and continuous delivery is that the, the code changes, sure, but the data remains the same. And you want it to remain the same, you want the data to last for a long time. So you're saying really that the, the stateless parts of your application um, get updated all the time, but then, hey, that's easy. That's not, you know, that's not that impressive. So um, it's, the, it's the data aspects which are the most important. Mm. And so, yeah, part of this experiment was just to see how sloppy can you really be, I mean, in the code and in the data and still have something that, that works. On You know, the observation is that, a bit like Hawkins' point, you know, the world is imperfect. Right? There's no there's no approach that's going to work by you say, well, I'm going to make the world perfect, or I'm going to iterate and increment and perfect everything. It's just, you, you, you just create better strategies for dealing with an imperfect world. You can't reverse the second order thermodynamics, you just live with it, and you, 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 you know, you build stuff that copes with and if you do that, if you take that, then your system is more reliable because they are built to face the unknown and built yeah. to face change. If you build systems that are brittle and break, any time it sees a bit of production data, which wasn't exactly the same as expected in your test data, then you know, you're know you forever having to release a new version of the system, which is what people do. Um, and that you know, is crazy and it's insane. But, you know, like, um, who defines what insane is? So. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of uh, complexity. I, 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 I'd love to sort of represent all of this schema and modeling. I, I think I've just mentioned before, Alloy, you know, is a tool for doing this sort of reasoning about these abstract data structures over time in a way that it gives you a visual interface to grapple with the um, the relationships and the, and the way they can tie themselves to code and procedures operating in those uh, entities and uh, uh, yeah I, I almost won't be satisfied until we have like yeah that sort of alloy level on top of crux or something which is it's it's like that that level of automated reasoning is uh, necessary, you know, regardless of whether you build it with something as dynamic as what we're using, because it's, it's inevitable. You're always going to need um, much more firepower than what we get with uh, with a human brain, mm. you know, a text editor and a, a Git repository. You know, we, we need these systems that can look at all the permutations and, and help us analyze them. Mm. That's a good point, actually, that if you have a data data quality problem, you could throw loads of tools at the problem. And it's a lot easier writing tools against data than it is writing tools against ASTs in your code, you know, and to try and find problems in your code, which, you know, you end up with a lot of code and a lot of, you know, it's a very weird data format in that there's not a lot of regularity to it. Every function is different. You know, but uh, the, uh, the data sets are much more regular, uh, and so you, you you can make inferences. Mm. I think it's. You know. I, I was just going to say, it makes me really the Hacker News exchange between Rich Hickey and. Uh, um, oh, Oh, it's dinner now. Yeah. Okay. It's dinner. Oh, I'm coming. I better close the show. All right. Yeah, I was going to say, Richie Keenan and Kay's hacking news interaction, the meaning of data. That's a good one. Yeah. Anyway. I've got some. Thanks, Mark. Anyway, it's, I'm too tired. It's been too long a day, but we'll, <laughs> we'll crack on some more. That wraps up, I think, episode nine. And thank you very much for watching. Hope everybody has a, a very nice day. Goodbye. Bye-bye. I've stopped.